Polish tank destroyers are entering the scene for World of Tanks, and oh boy do they have some incredibly weird statistics going for them. This tank is going to gain damage when being closer to its opponents, and to lose damage when further away. In today's video, we'll be breaking into everything you're going to need to know, at least with the current iteration of this vehicle stats. It is in super test, and as you can read at the bottom, characteristics are not final. And this is a tank that I'm quite confident will get some some changes here and there just because of how weirdly balanced it is so let's get straight into it starting off with the damage which is very dependent on the distance you are shooting at your opponents with for example the shell damage at less than or equal to 50 meters is 800 as we can see and it goes down as you go further away so anything past 50 meters to what I'm aware, the damage is going to gradually drop off to about 550 at 275 meters away. And then after 275 meters, it's going to get lower and lower to a minimum of 300 damage per shot. So I can already tell you, if you're the kind of player that loves to camp, this is probably the worst vehicle that you could put in your arsenal. If anything, this is the most anti-camping designed vehicle I've seen in a very long time. But that actually entices me, because I'm a player that likes to do aggressive maneuvers. But what's really weird about the tank is Wargaming has balanced it so that the closer you are to your opponents, the more damage you deal. But then they also gave it insane shell velocity. 1,700 meters a second on the standard, 2,000 meters a second on the premium, most likely APCR. That is insanely fast. In fact, it's more than the K91, which used to be the highest in the game. So, Wargaming is literally taking the approach of giving it more damage when you're closer to your opponents, but also so much shell velocity that it doesn't even matter if you're camping because you can almost auto-aim on opponents at super far distances. But then again, take a look at the pen. It's pretty good on the standard. 290 is really nice, but the gold at only 320 APCR, that is really, really mediocre. And it means that for the most part, you're not gonna really want to camp in this vehicle because 300. 20 mils of pen at two, 300 meters of distance is more like 280, 270, you're going to lose a lot of your effective penetration. So the way Wargaming's balanced this tank is that they've given it an insane amount of shell velocity for a vehicle that ironically doesn't need it because you're usually going to be driving it in the front line. Now the most important thing when it comes to this tank is the armor, and you should be glad that it does have decent armor, 200 millimeters on the hull, and as we can see, it is very well angled. The upper plate at an effective about 310 mils, so if you're using this vehicle's gun depression, which is 7 degrees, the chance of you being penned while hauled down is slim to none. But we'll notice that this looks to be kind of like a Soviet-style TD, an SU-12254, kind of like I SU variant tank. So the lower plate is most likely a weak spot, which we'll have to find out. Maybe it isn't, but uh, my guess is that's a very big, weak lower plate. So you're going to have to use this vehicle hold down. It's going to be really interesting, especially the side armor. Not very good either. Only 70 mils. That's really bad. The rear is only 60. So in terms of the vehicle's hull armor, it's not great. But look at the HP. That's a lot. 2,000. If you're running uh, improved hardening, you can get that up to 2,300, 2,400 if you're running bond. That's pretty good. So the tank's got a lot of different weird things. Mobility-wise, it's able to go pretty fast. 45, reversing at 15. That means if you were to run a turbo, you can get this thing to reverse at upwards of 19 kilometers per hour if you're running it with bond. Uh, probably, though, for most people, it'll be about 18 to 17 in reverse. But still, that's pretty good. Good. Overall, the tank is just really weird. And we can take a look at the accuracy, 0.35. That's very good base. If you're running just an aiming device and you're also running food, you would probably get that down to about 0.32, which is good enough to get the job done. Aiming time is all right. And the reload is very solid at 13.7 seconds. That is going to give this vehicle an effective damage per minute of around 3,500 if you are shooting at the minimum distance of 50 meters or less because you're going to be dealing the maximum damage of 800 per shot. But the thing is, you have to be 50 meters away or closer to your opponents. And this is where all the tanks we're talking about. Everybody's at least 100 meters away in most situations, especially early game. So because of that, I really can't see this effective DPM of 3,500 to be true. But if you ever do get in the situation of face-hugging or 
being in the farming range of 50 meters, you are going to have the most damage per minute for all tier 10 tank destroyers. You can get this thing over 4,000 if you're running food in a rammer, which is just absolutely insane. But again, you are going to have to worry about your weak side armor, most likely weak lower plate, possibly any hatches. So we'll have to see how that actually affects the vehicle. We can see this vehicle is a deep rifled gun. High tier Polish tank destroyers will be equipped with deep rifled guns unique to world of tanks not only does this give the guns a remarkable appearance but it also allows them to fire unusual shells at a very high velocity now we can see that interesting rifling right here it's a star-shaped barrel it's incredibly weird uh i don't really know what they mean by it's unique to world of tanks i haven't googled if that's a thing in real life because i have no clue i can't imagine it's a thing in real life but let me know in the comments maybe maybe it is so star tray shells. A key feature of the new mechanics is the introduction of star tray APCR shells. They are most effective when shooting at opponents 50 meters away. However, as the distance increases, the loss of kinetic energy means that they damage gradually decreases. Yep. Ammunition arsenal. With the new mechanics, shells deal a lot more damage at close range. The third shell is HE. Yeah. The HE is kind of weird as we can see. It just does 800 on all three rounds. Now, obviously, with only 85 mils of pen, you're not going to be shooting HE at people uh, especially with only a thousand meters of shell velocity very far away so it doesn't sound very impressive there to be completely honest now this is the part i did want to read which is the interface changes when using shells with the new mechanics in battle you will see a special widget displaying the expected average damage based on your distance from the enemy if they are highlighted as players approach their target the damage on the indicator will increase while with distance it will decrease this feature helps make a more informed decisions and use both shells efficiently. I don't know what they mean by both shells because they deal the same damage, but it is really unique that you can actually see how much you're going to deal. You see, the thing is, it's not a just 800 damage chunk, and then once you go to 275 meters, it's 550. It's going to gradually decrease, so it'll go from 800, and let's say you're 60 meters away, it's not going to be 550, it's going to be 780, 750, 740 the further you go away which is really interesting so yeah I, I think that's actually a really cool mechanic and i'm excited to see how this is actually balanced in the game the problem is if wargaming makes it too strong at close range then it's just going to be another minnow and absolutely dominate the matchmaker and if they make it too poor at distance then it, i don't know it's just a weird tank that's all i'm going to say so how to play the vehicle the average damage of the standard and special round at a distance of 50 meters or less together with its base reload at 13.7 seconds gives it 3500 dpm theoretically making it the highest in tier 10 however it won't be easy to show results like this in practice on one hand the i don't know how to pronounce this vehicle's name is well equipped to survive on the front line where it should be able to maximize the damage it deals it possesses good mobility and while its frontal armor is 200 with effective thickness reaching 310 the lower plate and cupola are relatively compact i don't really know if the lower plate is uh look uh, compact but okay um, on the other hand, the sides of this TD are pretty thin, which is what we said. Traverse is slow at 30 degrees, and the gun traverse arc is only 10. Yeah, that is true. I did not notice that. Does it have the gun arc here? Uh, I don't see it. But yeah, 10 degrees to the left and to the right, or is that in total? If it's 5 to the left and 5 to the right, that's actually awful. I'll have to say that right now. It's a really interesting vehicle on its overall balance, and it will be very cool to see this vehicle when it is fully released into the game or into the super test. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.